Hi, I'm Adam Walsh, host and producer of The Signal. We just wrapped up a show at the Torbay History House and Museum. We were talking about culture, crafts, heritage, why all of that's so important for our communities, and efforts to keep all of it alive. Here's some show highlights. I am right now making the magic happen. This is kneading the bread, kneading the dough. And when you knead the dough, you create what's called gluten. Everybody knows about gluten-free bread and gluten-free foods and diets. But See, I got friends who work out a lot that talk about glutes, uh, okay. but this is gluten. A little bit different, a little okay. bit different, okay. yeah. Um, but this is uh, what you do to um, create a nice, strong material so that when the yeast that we started this whole process with, when that yeast is activated, that's a living organism and it's, it's dormant. So when you add warm, sugary water to it, it wakes up and it starts to breathe. And when it exhales, it creates a gas, and when you have a nice gluten in your bread, the gas doesn't escape, mm. so your bread rises. And in order to do um, a nice bread that rises well, you want to give a good knead. So I usually go about 12 minutes. Okay. If you want to do something like a tea biscuit or something, you hardly touch it because you don't. You want a totally different type of texture to your to your end product. It's a beautiful home built in 1918, and there's such a beautiful light inside of this house. It used to be the Roman Catholic Presbytery, uh, so it was built as the resident for the parish priest in Torbay, and it was used as a residence right up until 2017. It has these beautiful grand front rooms, one as a dining room, another one was a study. Those have been turned into our exhibit galleries. And we're currently standing in the beautiful front foyer um, of the building. And you can just see the, the light and the warmth uh, that's here. You know, the original wood floors have been preserved, the original moldings. Uh, the town of Torbay really focused on trying to preserve the heritage features of the structure. Um, and it just, it has such a warm feeling. This is the part of bread making that could divide families. Whether you go two buns or three. That's, and I didn't think about that like that no, before. No, it's, it's, it's that big, yeah. yeah. No, it really is though. Yeah. Well, what I've decided to do is my white bread, I'll go three buns <laughs> and my whole wheat or multigrain breads, I'll go two. And then when you're digging something out of the freezer, you know what you're, what you're pulling out. But what I've done now is I've just shaped um, into a bread pan, three three balls of dough. Um, when I watched my grandmother do this when I was just a small child, she seemed to be able to do it magically and perfectly every single time. So hopefully by the time I get to her age when she was doing this, uh, I might know how to do it. But what I've learned is, is you try to squeeze the, the ball around so that all of your, your folds are underneath. Mm. And if you, if you were to look underneath, you'd see all the wrinkles and folds, but at the top, it's just if you pull your face tight, you lose all the wrinkles in your face. So that's what I try to do with my, my, my doll. All right, Rex, tell me what you got in your hand. Well, this is a, an old church window from uh, a church we think's in, uh, in Conception Bay North. Church has been torn down, but a friend of mine salvaged all the windows from it. Mm. And he wants to put them in a house he's building up in Salmon Cove, so we're restoring it. And so we take a window like this, and it's all nasty and cracked paint and caulking and everything in here strip it all down and make it look new many people would look at that and say we can't do anything with that we're going to take that to the dump and so that uh that's very distressing to me well on the other side is not cracked and looks like it's and now you're flipping it around and it looks like it's brand new how much work this, does it this is brand new that's brand so then you recreated this one and you joined it to the, the other well, side no, all one window all one window okay so we just restored half of it ah. okay and so yes, there's sir. about two hours yeah. worth of work in this yeah yeah plus and the glazing and whatnot so yeah. that's uh, that's another uh, another hour on priming another right. hour and a half or so and neil what do you got in your hand there uh what i have is a uh, a uh, sash from a uh, house, an 1880s era house um, from St. John's. Um, it's one project that I'm working on at the moment. It, uh, it did need some restoration. It wasn't quite as bad as this one here, but there was a lot of uh, broken glass, a lot of, lot of uh, body missing. So uh, this house currently is, uh, is getting some of those windows restored. So basically, same, I'm using the same, uh, same procedure with this here, uh, stripping, taking all the old glass out, uh, 
reglazing and so now we have an 1880s window that's in like new condition. We went to our mayor Bob Codner in 2007. Uh, four of us, the lady Eileen Newman from um, Bay, Roberts. Bay Roberts and Mabel Best and Irene and I had been going to each other's homes about every two weeks and quilting and we said this would be a really nice thing for others to do. So we went to the mayor and the mayor said <laughs> he was really uh, very happy to see us. Not, not that he wanted to see us but the idea the idea that we put in front of him because he, he was saying that he really wanted to get people involved, especially the seniors. Mm, so mm. he was very enthusiastic about our idea. So at the time, we had a, a kinsman club here. And uh, so he asked us to draft him a letter and he would bring it to the meeting on Monday. So Monday afternoon, we got a call saying that uh, you can have the facility in the kinsman club mm. uh, once a week. Mm. So we started from there and that was in 2007. 2007. So and I was looking at some of the, the, the binders pictures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you had the first one and the other one, what number is that? That's number eight. Number, number eight. eight. Yeah. So lots of binders, and lots of pictures. And we started with just a group of people, well it's all women, but we don't say, like we just haven't had any men ask, but um, it was people that were interested in quilting and that you had to be able to quilt a little, but you didn't have to be an expert or anything, but it was just to share. Yeah. And so it's become a social thing for no, a lot of people. What's the saying that you say, stitch, what is it? <laughs> oh, we, sometimes we call it a bitch <laughs> stitch session. <laughs> Because, I, never, uh, I never do that. Sometimes people are going through a difficult time for whatever, and uh, we just talk about it basically and just yeah, support each other. So it's uh, yeah. So that that was the name we put on it, bitch oh, and stitch. Oh, it's session. so good. <laughs> Can I do some shameless advertising? Yes, the town go for of Torbay it. is offering a bread making class May fourth. Not only will we have a basic white bread, we'll be showing folks how to do cinnamon bread and our version of pain au chocolat. So it's a, gonna be a fun, fun morning. You had me at bread, but then you got me <laughs> in at chocolat. Oh, chocolat, what do you want, what do you want? <laughs>